Welcome back everyone, it's Sylvia from Mozzie Scrapper with another 12x12 layout for you. Today I decided to scrapbook this gorgeous photo of my grandmother and it's the only photo I have from her youth so I'm really proud that I'm finally getting it scrapped. I will be using the Bow Bunny Garden Grove collection and these are the core cool products chosen by Auntie Vera Scrap and Craft for us ladies that are on her design team for the month of April. I will leave a link to Auntie Vera Scrap and Craft in my description box so that anyone interested can go and check out her very competitive prices. So as you would have seen, I have gutted my paper and now I'm just going to trim this gorgeous beige paper which I believe it was called Remember. And I just thought what an appropriate name Remember because that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm remembering my beautiful grandmother. For my mat, I decided I wanted to add a bit more texture, so I ran my piece of paper through my gutter bug using a embossing folder that I had in my stash, and then I decided I was going to ink it, and I went with the Distress Oxides in the colour Vintage Photo. Now, I do believe Vintage Photo must be one of my most used inks, because I seem to use it on nearly every layout. I will confess with you all that the image or the idea I had in my head is not what the end result is of this layout, but it's all good. I just went with the process and, you know, sometimes things as you're creating, things do change. You find something in your stash and your layout takes a completely different turn. And this is what happens with this layout. So I'm just auditioning bits and pieces from my stash. I have these doilies and really you can't have a heritage layout without some doilies. And really, this is why I don't use stickers. This is a chipboard with, it's a sticker chipboard. It's from the Bow Bunnies Garden Grove collection. And even though I do love all those golds and browns and flowers, um, I shouldn't have stuck it down because I then fall in love with this paper. And this is the culprit. I saw this paper and it's just so bright and it's got all these flowers. And for some reason, it just really reminded me of my grandmother and things completely turn and I regret sticking down that chipboard sticker. So I get this piece of paper, I've cut this rectangle out and I thought, oh, it's still a little bit too harsh. So what I'll end up doing is I get out these old scissors that I've had in my stash forever. I actually got this collection from Kmart, would you believe? And they're just so trusty. Whenever I want a decorative border, I tend to turn to them. So I picked out one of the scissors that I thought would look nice on this layout. It's sort of like a uneven scallop, if, if that makes any sense to any of you. So I trim all four sides, and I really like the softness that it adds to my layout just by giving it that decorative edge. And then, of course, I'm going to go ahead and ink all my papers with my Vintage Photo Distress Oxide. I really love this Bow Bunny Garden Grove collection. I don't have a lot of the papers left, unfortunately. So I'm making the best of everything. So this is a scrappy piece that was left over from the mat that I did my photo with. And I ran it through my cuddle bug using this old Spellbinders die that I had. And I just thought that that looked beautiful. So yes, I'm using every little bit of scrap. So this doily here has been in my stash forever. It's, I don't know. Have, I have no idea where it came from. It's just appeared in my stash, but it's absolutely gorgeous. It's like a canvas material. And then I also got another doily from my stash, that white one there. And really, what's a heritage layout without, without some doilies? So I then got this, that chipboard. It's a chipboard sticker sheet there that came with the Garden Grove collection. And I stuck it down there. It did go well, but... It landed up being, in real life, it looked so in your face. And this is why I don't stick down anything because I change my mind and then I decide to use that piece of ephemera. Now, this ephemera is not actually from the Garden Grove. It goes really well with the Garden Grove collection, but it's the Bow Bunny's Noteworthy Ephemera. And I absolutely love it. I've used a lot of this ephemera on most of my layouts lately. And I'm just additioning bits and pieces. And I've left a lot of this on because you will see that when it came to embellishing this layout, I changed my mind numerous times, like I did with the uh, the round ephemera piece. 
the sticker sheet that I took down, I changed my mind quite a lot. And it's okay, sometimes layouts don't come together really quickly. I admit I struggled with this layout. Uh, there were times where I just didn't like it and especially the chipboard sticker at the top there on the uh, left hand side. I really didn't like that. Uh, it is a gorgeous piece but it just didn't work with this layout and I only stuck that down because I my original train of thought was completely different to what landed up happening. So as you can see I've stuck down more ephemera, I've used some butterflies and I've decided yes I'm going to go with this. I'll end up gluing things down and here I'm adding a little bit of interest by just using a soft brush and I'm adding some of that distress oxide in the color vintage photo that I mentioned earlier and I'm just outlining around just creating a nice soft brown halo which really gives it that authentic vintage look. I am not impressed with this product. It's one of the Tim Holtz products that um, adds a antique feel to your layout, but it had dried out. I haven't had it that long and it's dried out, so not impressed. So what I did was just to add a bit more of a vintage feel, I'm just using the Distress Oxide in the vintage photo once again, and just slightly going over all my ephemera and it just tones everything down because it was really bright and I wanted things a little bit more muted. I had this piece of cheesecloth on my desk so I did like the cheesecloth but I decided that I was going to give it a bit more colour and I'm just using the Distress Oxide uh, Spray Stain and the colour is Shabby Shutters and I absolutely love the texture that it added to my layout. So I'm just going to use this cheesecloth now that it has dried and I'm just going to add it behind some of the flowers, behind some of the doilies just to add a little bit of interest. I did cut every I did cut the cheesecloth into small manageable pieces because I didn't want a big piece. I just wanted hints of the cheesecloth peeking out. So I'm going to admit that I did not fall in love with this layout straight away. I just wanted this layout to be so perfect to document my grandmother that I just didn't like it. There was just something wrong and I had to walk away from it for a number of days. And then when I came back one day, I just went, you know what, I'm just going to fix that chipboard that's on the left hand left hand side and see how I go because I was almost ready to tear this and put it in the bin because I just wasn't happy with it. Here is where I just thought you know what rip this little sucker out and put it aside to use on another more appropriate layout and look at the mess I make of my paper but I just thought you know what just persevere you'll get through it. So what I did was uh, all my ephemera is in little boxes, all colour coordinated. So I got out the box of my yellow and orange ephemera and I just went looking for tones that would go well with this, this layout. And I just auditioned different pieces of flowers, whatever I had, butterflies. And I will admit I struggled and I think it was not so much the layout, it was the pressure that I put on myself to make this layout of my grandmother as perfect as could be. And really, I, I don't think anything is going to be just right because I'm not going to capture the essence of this amazing woman that reared such a wonderful man such as my father. And yes, I'm biased, but when it comes to dads, I really think I won the lottery. I do apologize that this is a bit of a long video compared to my regular ones but I just wanted to leave all this oh, what is it mess in because normally I know that as, as when I'm watching other youtubers just just think oh their layouts came but came together so flawlessly and you know what for most part my layouts do come together quite easily I have an image in my head I have an idea and I just get it down but I have been scrapping for over 15 years so I more or less know what I like and what I want to put down but this layout it tested me uh, but like I said earlier I did think it was just the pressure that I was putting on myself and really nobody is going to know how horrible that corner is underneath. I did manage to salvage it and I will admit I didn't like it straight away I had to come back and leave the layout. I left it for a number of days and then I went, you know what, I do like it. 
So here I am, I'm just putting that little piece of ribbon that I cut out earlier and didn't use. So it finally gets tucked away in that little curve there. And then I'm going to add some cheesecloth as well. Please let me know in the comments if you've ever stuffed up a little segment of your layout and how you managed to salvage it. So I made the title on my silhouette machine. I ended up cutting Mia well out four times and then just gluing it all together. And then I go in with these liquid pearls. I wrote perfect pearls there, but they're liquid pearls. And the first layer of color I did was in the color peacock. And that was really, really in your face. I didn't like it. So then I go over it again with the color buttercup. And with the beautiful undertones of the green and then this golden are oh, not really golden it's like a soft buttercup color it just really added the the perfect thing for my layout and i know that per, um, liquid pearls aren't normally done for painting but this added a lot of texture it gave it uh, some dimension that you don't get from paint and really i did this because i stuffed up i thought i was picking up a little little thing of paint that was on my desk and i didn't realize that i'd actually pick uh picked the liquid pearls but you know what so what it all worked out in the end so once I got my grandma's name Maria down I didn't quite like the starkness of the white so I do go over it with lucky clover distress oxides and it just adds that hint of color that it needed I have some close-up coming up so that you can see all the details and the color and I want to thank everyone for watching so if you haven't already subscribed to my little growing channel, I would love it if you would do so by hitting that subscribe button and also the bell for notifications of when I do upload. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and till next time. Bye everyone.